What up, Tubies? Here's your War Boss Tay, and I got another War Boss painting tutorial for you. This time, it's the largest Spooky Toberfest video so far. That's right, it is the Games Workshop Terror Geist and Ghoul King. And I'm going to take you step by step through the process of how to paint your Terror Geist so that it comes out looking just like mine. What the paints are that I use, some techniques on blending, multi-tone blending for the bone to get the effect of gradually darkening up into what you see on the vertebrae column. Also what I did with the teeth and just my general approach on how I tackled such a large project. And here's the guts. So, what a great model to paint. What a fantastic sculpt crouched over like, like he's gonna pounce. And with the Ghoul King separate, I can use this bad boy as a rare choice or as a mount for my Ghoul King. And I just love it. And so I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're able to get some inspiration out of it for tackling large projects if you've got any lying around that, you know, it's, it's never too early to start or it's never too late to start. And it's always just a matter of taking out the paint, sitting down and just getting to it. So this is one I was dreading because it was so large and just wasn't sure how it turned out, but I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you are too. And I hope you enjoy the Warboss tutorial. So the first thing I did after undercoating my model black, the entire thing black, I decided I might as well get started on the base. So I painted the sand of the base scorched brown. And over that I dry brushed uh, Bicio Brown. It's it's nowhere near done, but it's just, you know, the base coat. Base coat. For the model itself, I'm going to paint working my way inside out. So, the farthest thing on the inside of this model, underneath the ribcage there, are its bloody tendons and guts. So I'm going to paint the inside of the creature's... all of its bloody musculature and tendons and stuff, as well as the any tendons around the mouth or or bloody tendons that are sticking out under the fur, oh, top layer of skin I'm gonna base coat them with GW's Mechrite Red I'm also working at the same time I'm gonna work on all of the bone so this is probably gonna take the longest out of all the steps because I want to get a nice good smooth even coverage on the bone on any parts of the bone of the model I'm gonna paint with Deneb Stone Games Workshop's foundation colors Deneb Stone on all of the bone. Okay. Oh, I see the rest of my housemates are home, so I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna get started. See you in the next part of the video. So here's what we've ended up with after many hours of painting and going back over the parts that we painted over in black and red and then stone and it's a lot easier to see let's take a look at the inside of the bodily organs so the thing that you're going to find difficult if <laughs> if you go in order of painting like I did is that it's going to be hard for you to get in there you're just going to have to find different angles to stab the paint, the mechrite red inside, and that's too bad that there's not really a ideal way of doing this unless you don't glue it down to the base, then you'll be able to get in, but, uh, uh, but what I found was that because I had glued mine to the base already, I had to turn it, turn my brush and the model at all these weird funky angles just to get inside, and then I had a lot of red paint on the outer layers that I had to go back over, but it, it was okay, I think in the end. It was a good learning experience. You're gonna find too that you might get frustrated with painting the Deneb stone in the wings that a lot of it gets into the actual tendons of or the wings, the, the, the wing part, the musculature of the wings. You're gonna have to go back over in Bad at Black and or uh, in Chaos Black and I found that I'm, I'm seeing mistakes now that I'm gonna have to paint back over in Deneb stone. I also p finished up painting the base and what I do for the base is that after I 
I spray it <coughs> in black. I go over it with scorched brown. And then I do a heavy dry brush of bestial brown and then a dry, light dry brush of bleached bone. <coughs> and that gives you this kind of effect, which gives, it, gives the base a lot of color. Darker browns to, to offset the black and the white of the, of the model itself. So you can be you can use your judgment on where you want to paint the red for the 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 bloody body bodily parts inside and where you want to paint the bone. I could have probably painted the shoulder bone in Mechrite red as well, but I decided to have the bone popping out there because this side I painted completely red. It's up to you. Also don't forget you've got these little bony bits in there. You do not want to paint over the, the black fur though. This fur that's coming down that you would have glued on if you're doing the, the Terror Geist model. You've also got some fur over here in front and behind the tail. Those were the hardest things to glue on when I was building the model. They're kind of difficult to get a good a good handle on, but hopefully this will give you an idea of what the color breakdown is for the red and the bone. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take Devlin mud and you're going to wash it all over the bone and you don't want it to, you don't want to make it too thick if 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 it looks like you're going to need to apply more later then you're just going to make, apply a second coat but what the Devlin mud is going to do is it's going to get into the shadows and the recesses and it's going to blend a lot of the colors together and and just by the way that the wash works, the areas that are higher up on the model where the light would naturally hit is going to get drier faster because all the wash is going to pool to the bottom. So it will naturally shade your model and give you some good natural highlights. And then if you feel like the wash is still too light, then you can apply a second coat. But you want to be careful because depending on what the effect you want of the bone is to be, you don't want it to be too dark. You want to have somewhere to go when you're highlighting back up. So that's Devlin mud for all of the bones. And then for the bloody red guts, you're going to wash all of that in Bad Dad Black. And that's going to give it a lot of dark highlight or dark shade that we're going to highlight back up later. But for right now, it's just too bright. The reds are too bright. We're going to need to, to darken it down a bit. So a nice application of Bad Dad Black to all of the red. Okay, and we'll see you when that is done. Okay, I took a couple steps after the wash is dried. I wanted to make sure I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do before I filmed, but after the Devlin mud dries on the bones, the first thing you're gonna do is get some Deneb stone, and after thinning it down with some water, you're gonna lightly go back over the bone, the bone areas bringing it back to however bright you want them to be. And it's a little bit bright with my lamp, but you can kind of see the effect that I was going for. And then after you're done with that, you're going to take some Griffin Sepia wash and you're going to use that to tie the Deneb stone into the Devlin mud. So like for example, this area, which I just touched up before I started filming, I painted Deneb stone and then after the Devlin mud wash and painting it back up again with Deneb stone, I felt like one certain area was a little bit too, too bright. So I went back over again with the Griffin sepia wash and it really nicely ties in together the brightness and the stark whiteness of the Deneb stone with the Devlin mud wash. I also purposely left the claws down here nice and dark, assuming that the Terror Geist travels a lot, or, or uh, when it lands at least, it gets its claws nice and dirty. So I just used a lot of wash in the uh, to pool into the recesses there, and I think it makes a nice contrast. Then what I did was I took some Badab Black wash and I mixed it with Chaos Black about one to one and I painted it over the center of each of the spines on the vertebrae column. And the wash is going to thin down the, 
the Chaos Black, so it's not that thick. The Chaos Black adds a little bit more pigment so that it's not too thin. And as you can see, some of it is already starting to, to dry up at the front, so I'm going to add another application so that it smooths itself out. But I think this is a great contrast, especially if you have or you know someone in your gaming area who has a zombie dragon and their spines may be completely a lot, you know, a lot lighter than, than this is, but I think it's a good effect. And again, that's bad at black wash, chaos black paint, just mixed at a one-to-one. -one. Oh, this thing is so big and unwieldy. And just painted over the tips of each of the vertebrae columns. Then, you're going to take your denim stone and you are going to lightly feather the sides of the vertebrae columns so that it creates a nice contrast between the center of the spine and the black, meaty, leathery skin parts. You can see that. The denim stone on the side really creates a nice contrast and will make the spinal column pop from farther away. The last thing I did was after the Bad Ab Black wash dried in the red skin areas, I took some blood red and I layered them into all of the red, gory, bloody parts. Blood red is a nice highlight to add on top of Mechrite red. It blends really nicely, especially after a, a wash like the Bad Ab Black that goes into the recesses. So the next step is we're getting close to the end for the Terrorgeist itself. I'm actually going to, I took a look at the GW website and the teeth of the Terrorgeist is actually this dark, dark brown black. So I'm going to paint Caradin granite, each of the Terrorgeist teeth, and then for the bottom teeth I'm going to layer and add in a little bit of Deneb stone so that you can see some streaks and reflections. And for the, for the upper set of teeth I'm going to add a little bit less Deneb stone, but I'm still going to add a little bit so that it creates a contrast. And then I am going to cover all of the teeth in gloss varnish art coat, which is going to make it shine. And once I'm done with that, I think that I'm going to just paint the paint the stones in various shades of gray, so that they will kind of appear more like rocks, rock out, rock outcropping. So Adeptus Battle Gray, Codex, Codex Gray and then feather up with Fortress Grey. And then the Terrorgeist itself will be finished and then I can work on the Ghoul King. So that's it. Once again, I'm gonna work on the teeth and then the stones. And then I'm gonna to get to work on the King. So I'll show you that when I get to it. And there you have it. I finished the Ghoul King. I painted him up just like my other ghouls. I thought it was a great, figure to paint, really similar to the other Games Workshop ghouls, but different enough that I thought I could do some really fun stuff with the skin tones. I might go back over some of these, some of the raised areas with a little bit of Deneb Stone to just highlight him back up, but I, I thought I'd just make him really dark and dirty and bruised and just really feral looking. And I, I used a white for the fangs and white for the eyes because I want, wanted your the, the viewer's eyes to immediately be drawn to them when you first look at the figure. Um, but yeah, what a great dynamic model. I hope when GW starts re-releasing the ghouls with the zombies, hopefully when the new wave of vampire counts comes out that they match this kind of more feral aesthetic. It reminds me of the, the creatures from if any of you have seen The Descent, or The Descent Part 2, those underground, blind, flesh-eating subhumans remind me a lot of the ghouls from Games Workshop. So there you have it, all done. The Terrorgeist and the Ghoul King. I've decided that in, in case I want to run the Terrorgeist as just a rare model, like I, like I said that I would keep them separate but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this war boss tutorial on painting the Terrorgeist and the Ghoul King model if if you are curious about how I painted the Ghoul King model please go to the how to paint ghouls games workshop ghouls video that I have on my video list I have an ant on my hand 
and the only thing I think I did differently was that I gave him, since he's got a loincloth, uh, I, in, instead of just the, you know, that spiky hair stuff, I, I gave it the uh, same color, Adeptus Battle Gray, and yeah, and he's got a little pouch that I painted Kevry Brown. Other than that, everything else I used is, as in the Google Painting War Boss tutorial, so just follow that. I hope you've enjoyed this War Boss tutorial. It was a long one to put together. Let's just do a little spin around of the Terror guys one more time. I'll take you off. We saw you already. And hope you're enjoying Spooky Toberfest. Not sure what I might do next. I've got a Slaughter Master, Ogre Slaughter Master, all built up and ready to go and primered. And I might do that. I might do. I might do some painting tutorials on the Malifaux guys that I got, Summer Teeth Jones, but if there's something you want to see, I've also got um, my list of requests that uh, other people wanted me to do, so I, yeah, I, I know I've also got some Skaven Plague Monks and some just a, a bunch of different models, but if there's anything you'd like to see, then let me know. Once Spooky Tober Fest is over, I'm planning on doing some Eldar and some Dwarves, got, got a couple requests for those, but just some stuff that I have built up in my collection over the years that I'm finally getting able to paint up just for the, the fun of it. But thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this extra extra large dose of Spooky Toberfest and we'll see you in the next one. Subscribe